A few months ago, I made a Discord bot that lets you play a Japanese puzzle game. You might have possibly maybe heard of it. A few weeks after, I made another Discord bot that was basically a crowdsourced fortune teller that let you vote on the outcome of upcoming events. I think there can be an interesting cross-section between these two projects. A collaborative real-time game that kind of goes in slow motion and lets you vote for the next move. Twitter is the perfect platform for this. It allows for like literally anyone to participate and it has a decent public API. So in this video, we're going to make a game with Twitter. I'm actually going to make a 3D multiplayer game really quick. Alright, yeah, I'm done. That didn't take too long because I'm using Core, the sponsor of this video. You might have possibly maybe heard of Core before. It's a free platform that makes it easy for anyone to create, publish, and play games. Even if you've never made a game before, Core is a great place to start, especially if you want to make 3D online multiplayer games. No coding is required, so there's none of the pain that usually goes into making a game like inverse kinematics for foot placement, which I actually thought was pretty cool. There are thousands of free high quality music, sounds, and art assets you can use to get started. Core lets you create game logic in Lua, so you can build anything from scratch. You can also remix and reimagine content shared by other creators, like, uh, jump guys? And when you're ready to publish, your game will go live instantly on the Core platform with the click of a button. Core also recently announced a monetization system for top creators, and if you're a student like me, you can distract yourself from your existential dread by participating in Core's student game dev hackathon with over $10,000 in prizes. Thanks so much to Core for sponsoring this video. Sponsors will make it possible for me to work on videos that I wouldn't be able to do otherwise. So I hope you guys don't mind and make sure to check out Core for free by clicking the link in the description. So before I can make a Twitter bot that plays a game, I need two things, a Twitter bot and a game. So I started off by making a new Twitter account. Apparently you can't use the word Twitter in your Twitter name. So, uh, yeah. Something is a little off here. But I ended up finding a Unicode character that looks just like a T. Please don't ban me, Twitter. Then I found this article by Martin Ehrlich on how to set up a Twitter bot with Java using a Java library called twitter for j If you ignore the subtle interwoven political commentary, it's pretty helpful. With it, I was able to set up a simple bot that can send tweets. I messed around with it a bit, but that was all I really needed. Now it was time to make the game. You probably already saw from the bot's username and the thumbnail of this video, but Snake is the perfect game for this. It's grid-based, universally recognizable, and, well, pretty easy to code. I actually made a Snake game for the Nintendo DS, and before that I made a prototype of the gameplay in Java because I was bored at school one day. It's played through a Java console and uses a grid of characters, which is pretty fitting for this project, so I'm just gonna, you know, recycle. So I copied over all my classes to my Twitter bot project, refactored the main while loop into a more abstract method that takes a command and returns a string, then I tested it out, first by outputting console messages, then by sending actual tweets. Now I just have to, you know, finish the gameplay. I made a Trello board with everything I needed to do, and then of course completely ignored it and forgot about its existence. I wrote some code to restart the game when colliding with yourself, cause you know, that's kind of the point of the game, and then did the same thing when you hit a wall. Then I made it so the snake would continue in its current direction if no move is picked. And then I added a two button control system where you can move counterclockwise or clockwise since I was planning on using likes and retweets to pick a move. A three button movement system would definitely be better but for some reason the Twitter API doesn't allow you to create polls. So to test it out I made the game update and tweet out a new grid every five minutes. Oh. Oh god, what the f- Okay, at least I thought it was 5 minutes, but it turns out using a variable frame rate to track time isn't the best idea. So I refactored the code to use Java's built-in timer and task scheduling, and it actually worked. But oh no, it's ugly. Oh. So I gave the snake a head and changed the body and ground characters. 
Now I just need to implement the actual interactions. Every time I update the game, I download the bot's latest tweet and check the like and retweet count. If the retweets are higher, the snake turns counterclockwise, and if the likes are higher, it turns clockwise. I also display the movement options on the screen, which changes based on your current direction. It turns out the movement didn't really line up with the on-screen options, because turning clockwise, for example, will make you turn right if you're moving up, but will make you turn left if you're moving down. So I kind of just hard-coded the movement options to fix that, and now it works. It's Snake, as a Twitter bot. But we aren't done yet. I added a score system based on the current length of the snake, and made whatever this is. I guess it's like a death screen. Now the game looks nice, but there's a bit of a disparity because the profile itself is disgusting. So I created a profile picture in GIMP, as well as this questionable banner image. And now, all that's left is to officially start the bot. I decided to just run it on my own computer for now, since it's not like I leave my room anyway, but let me know if you have any suggestions for web hosts. I changed the interval between tweets from 5 minutes to 30 minutes, pressed run, and went to bed. When I woke up, I felt a weird mix between depression and excitement, because the bot had more followers than my main account. Over the next few days, the bot just kept growing. It seems to have developed its own fan base. Okay, never mind, this is a cult. Seriously though, it's been really awesome to see what this has turned into in just a few days. The limited control scheme has created some unique strategies, and watching people collaborate and figure out the best routes has been really cool. But of course, the best part is when we get a new record. So yeah, I guess we'll just see where this goes. If you want to check out the bot, I'll leave a link to its profile in the description. A lot of people have been sharing suggestions, and don't worry, I'll definitely keep updating the bot and adding some improvements to make the game a little more fair. That's everything, so thanks so much for watching, I hope this video was helpful. Also, don't forget to check out Core, it's completely free, just visit coregames.com or click the link in the description.